Hello uh, to uh, everyone and welcome to the 13th Beldoc International Documentary Film Festival. I'm talking today with uh, Juliana van Hul. She's the director of the movie called Radio Silence. Hello. Hello, Yelena. So good to see you. Thank you very much. Um, well, your movie is focused on Carmen Aristegui. She is the famous investigative and courageous journalist from Mexico. Who is Carmen to you and how did you decide to make such a movie? Um, well, as the film says it, I used to listen to, to Carmen's voice on the radio since I was a teenager. Um, when you live in a city like Mexico City, you spend a lot of, tra uh, of time in traffic jams. And I remember just my father driving me to school and Carmen was already um, part of my life. And um, she was a very critical voice. And, um, <coughs> and for me, it was a way to, to open my eyes to politics, to the sense of, uh, of justice, of, uh, um, of a critical journalism. And then uh, when I was older, I got the opportunity to travel abroad to um, do a master's degree here in Switzerland. And of course, <clears throat> Carmen's program kept on, I, I kept on listening to, to the program at home. Uh, for me, it was a way to keep a bridge between uh, Mexico, a country uh, that I love. And, uh, and um, at that time in uh, 2014, the end of 2014, uh, the situation in Mexico was uh, very hard. Uh, in uh, September, as you might know, 43 peasant, uh, very young students were ki kidnapped and, uh, and missing. And uh, the Mexican society didn't know exactly what had happened to them. And Carmen was a very important journalist to try uh, to help us understand what had happened. And she was the first one to invite to her program the survivors, some survivors of the attacks that um, the students were victims of and uh, some of the parents of the missing students. And uh, a couple of uh, months after that, she revealed this huge uh, investigative investigation um, uh, revealing that uh, the, the former president Enrique Peña Nieto had this huge uh, villa that was given uh, by a constructor and that was a corruption issue around the president. And some months after that, suddenly from one day to another, uh, Carmen was kicked off of her radio show. And so uh, in this ambience, um, the film was born for me as um, a very deep sense of um, worry about, about Mexico. The words were missing to me in sense of trying to explain the violence that was uh, happening in Mexico. Um, as I show it in the film, I uh, at some point uh, saw the, the image of the face of one of the students uh, totally, um, how do you say, uh, uh, take, taken off and somebody took a picture and this picture was uh, traveling in social media. And for me, it was just so shocking and I was speechless uh, about this situation in Mexico. And then on top of that, we didn't have Carmen anymore. This uh, voice that was helping us trying to understand what was happening to us. So um, in this feeling of uh, wanted, wanting, uh, of course, more justice, and in this feeling that uh, the situation in Mexico was really dangerous and that something could happen to her, uh, I decided to, to go to Mexico to try to find her and to propose her a film. Uh, maybe just you mentioned in which she lost her job, 200,000 uh, people were protesting and signing petition for her to come back on air, but that didn't happen. Um, it wasn't easy for you to uh, approach her, you, you mentioned. Uh, you Was that because um, uh, you maybe didn't um, know how dangerous it is or you didn't understand or you were expecting that it would, wouldn't be easy to approach somebody uh, like who is dealing with such a pressure and uh, with, is in such a situation? 
Um, I, before going to Mexico, I imagined that it wasn't going to be that easy. Uh, the, the ambience was really tense because we already, she already knew that she was under surveillance. And uh, they were killing journalists uh, every day, and uh, not only in the provinces and the rest of the country, but in Mexico City. So danger was really, really close. So I thought that uh, it was going to take some time in order to approach her and to win her, her, um, her trust. But um, I managed to, to learn and to get information about uh, um, a little office where she was uh, still uh, publishing uh, through her uh, uh, website. And then I wrote a letter and I waited, fingers crossed. And then uh, a couple of weeks later, uh, uh, and her assistant wrote back saying that uh, she agreed uh, for me to do to the to do the film, and uh, that what else she could do uh, to help me. And so I asked for an uh, an interview, and then we met. And I didn't know at that point um, what the film was gonna uh, be about and how uh, much access she was going to to give me. Um, however, it uh, all immediately in this uh, first meeting, uh, I was shocked about the fact that she was she was moving in Mexico City in uh, Uber in taxis. She didn't have I was imagining you know a big van with a driver and maybe some security, nothing at all. Uh, that was for me quite shocking. And then little by little, I managed to keep on uh, meeting her and, um, and, and meet the rest of the team and establishing very little bit by little this uh, relationship of confidence and trust in order to, to, to stick my camera actually to her as much as possible. Uh, you captured throughout uh, years uh, uh, the different sorts of pressure that these journalists, the Carmen and her team were exposed to the extent that at one point she was talking about that her correspondence with her son was uh, under surveillance. You also mentioned that you uh, saw some cars following you. So how was that experience? Did you, uh, did you know and, and what did you learn about the pressures uh, that uh, investigative journalists in Mexico are under? while you work while you were working on your movie um so at some point uh carmen decided to publish the fact that not only her and uh, people from her team but also her son was victim of this uh pegasus malware that was installed in his uh, iphone and i believe that she decided to make that published uh that, that public because uh, i believe that for her uh, a strategy of uh, protection is the way that is is is, is um, uh, uh, to make people know. Actually, for her, of, of course, it was an investigation and, and a journalist matter that Mexican society had to know that the government was using this malware to serve, to control our journalists. A malware that is used to control terrorists or. Uh, narcos or cartels, but not journalists. And, uh, and also, I believe, as a kind of protection to be in the spotlight. And if something happened to them, uh, uh, people already knew. That's on, on one side. And uh, I didn't know exactly if we uh, could be in danger by relating to her, but I was very worried about my rushes because as time went by and as she really uh, let us more and more access, uh, at some point uh, I had a lot of information of uh, her work, of um, her da daily routine, and uh, I was able to film some of the discussions between them while they were working and while they were doing new investigative uh, work. And uh, I was always worried about going out of this uh, office and that my rushes could end up in the wrong hands. So uh, we took together um, a, a course um, given by this um, association called uh, Article 19, Article 19, which is based uh, in London, in, in the UK, uh, but uh, works uh, very hardly in Mexico to support journalism. And they gave us some classes 
on how to work on uh, on a, how how to have a protocol of security when you are uh, in this uh, sort of of works. So we were um, just trying to be very um, uh, to have a lot of discipline with this protocol, not to mention things to anyone, not to let people know what we're, we were doing, where, at what time, to be very discreet. And then we asked some help to the Swiss embassy, and they were always um, uh, knowing what we were doing in case that we needed to take our rushes immediately uh, to the Swiss embassy to have them secure and transfer direct them directly to Switzerland through um, a diplomatic um, uh, suitcase yeah. yet made. So fortunately we didn't have to, to use uh, that, but we were, uh, we were helped by them. And then uh, I decided to hire uh, different uh, drivers for the production after the first meetings with Carmen uh, took place and that we were able to have a, a correct financement to the film and that we were working just a, as a regular shooting, uh, we decided that it was important that the drivers didn't know also a lot of information. So every two weeks we, ch we changed drivers. And for me, it was very impressive that every one of these drivers kept on telling me at some point we've been followed. And I tried to have just a journal about when the situation took place and it always had to, uh, was related with um, uh, a moment where, where we had been in contact with Carmen in an open place, uh, in a restaurant, in a meeting, in a conference. In, um, so she was for sure, she was uh, um, followed or under surveillance and maybe they just wanted to know what we were doing. Um, that's one uh, hypothesis. And the other thing is that, of course, uh, you get scared uh, at some point. Uh, I will never uh, um, uh, forget when we came back to this first uh, trip in, in Washington and uh, I, I got home and the door of my apartment was, uh, had signs of somebody that uh, had tried to open it. And it was very fast. I mean, it was the first uh, scene that we had publicly shoot with Carmen. I thought this is going really fast. So I believe that if they would have wanted to do something to us, they, they could have done it. But the idea is just to make you scared so that you stop and so that you get away of uh, Carmen's circle and so that she gets lonely. So that um, this strategy of her that I talked in the beginning about having people around and be have a sort of spotlight that protects her um, uh, vanish and 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 makes her really ver vulnerable. Um, considering um, a lot of violence that was uh, shown in a movie, like moment that were happening in uh, in uh, in Mexico threats that uh, Carmen and her crew um, received, what happened with her um, uh, career. Also, there is a very, um, let's say, a scary moment when uh, she videotaped uh, the uh, the people who came into uh, her new office and took uh, a, a laptop. Uh, how would you describe Carmen and, and her team, people who are still living in Mexico and working investigative um, journalistic work in Mexico? Of course, their courage for me is amazing. I mean, um, she, I believe um, that maybe for her is a bit different than for them, for the rest of the team, because she's really visible and she, she, this, this gives you, gives her a sort of protection. And maybe for the rest of the team, this is different. Um, for me, it was very impressive to see how she, she never has a doubt that she is uh, doing right and that she is going to keep doing whatever uh, she is doing at that moment, that her, her work is going to continue. She doesn't hesitate. Uh, we learned about this situation when we were uh, in Washington in the second trip, that actually doesn't appear in the film, uh, and suddenly she learned that in, uh, some people had entered the, the, the office. And I, I could see that, uh, of course, she was, uh, she was worried, but at never in her head, uh, she had the, the thought that she had to stop. 
And then we came back to Mexico a couple of days after the events and we were in the office and we could see uh, the, the marks of the fingers and the door um, um, broken. And uh, we, I shot this scene where they are actually looking at the, at the videos. And it was very impressive that these guys uh, didn't even cover their face as uh, if they were absolutely sure that nothing had, it was going to happen to them. It was very evident that it was um, something intentional just to, to scare. It was a message. Uh, they, they, some of the colleagues uh, say in the scene, um, if they, they want to steal something, they would have stolen. Um, so a rubbers rub, and they didn't rub anything besides uh, a laptop. There were more things in that office. Uh, but what was impressive also to me is that she followed exactly the same protocol um, as someone in a normal uh, uh, country with a, with a good uh, justice system would have done. She, um, they called the, the police, they did a, they opened a dossier and that they followed just uh, as it was a regular uh, robbery and they opened a, an in this investigation case. And uh, for me, I, I kept on and kept on asking her, how uh, do you still believe in justice in this country? I mean, it, there's so much impunity. Uh, and she kept on saying, if I don't believe that there is a hope and I don't believe that this has a solution, uh, I, I, I have to stop and there's no way I'm gonna stop. So she was um, a bit driven in this uh, logic, which for me, it was very impressive because of course it, it implied a lot of danger. And we conclude that maybe this is the, the kind of the way that your movie ends uh, with a, a bit of hope that Carmen is uh, back in the air and people are still able to uh, listen to her on the national uh, frequencies. Uh, why, why did you, what were you expecting um, to be uh, the reactions uh, um, on your movie and how the, are the actually uh, the reactions are the, the way you were expecting this? Maybe I just should add that, uh, as I was saying before, that it, it is different for her than for the, the rest of the colleagues. As you can see in one scene, one of them, Juan Omar, uh, is about to, to cry as uh, it is hard for them uh, to, to imagine that something very, yeah, very dangerous or very hard could, ha could happen to them, that they could lose their lives. And I believe that um, they they have the sense that maybe they are less protected because of this visibility and and it was shown in this scene for me it was also impressive to see that uh, that uh, that they have feelings you know because at some point they just uh, seem like like superheroes at least to me how the film was received well of course I was very happy it was one of the my intentions to to have uh, the film in uh, in an international circuit because I wanted to to cry to, to to shout to the whole world what was happening in Mexico when I first had the idea of making it, so we've we've um, uh, we've been able to do it and most of the comments always um, that that come to us uh, go around um, the, the the courage. Uh, that Carmen has, and uh, so in that sense, I'm I'm happy that I was able to to transmit um, the the importance that uh, she represents for for Mexicans, and uh, and I was also um, I don't know how to say, but uh, expect very yeah expecting I didn't, didn't know what to expect um, for the film to go in Mexico because it's different to show it. Uh, in your own home with a, a public that know the story, that know Carmen, that knows um, everything. And it was a huge challenge to build and to, to write and to edit the film for both publics, a public that didn't know maybe anything about Mexico and a public that knew by heart the whole story. But fortunately, um, 
Mexican reactions are also uh, good in the sense that we need more films, more documentary films in Mexico to that 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 make us build uh, our own memory that that help us not to forget uh, what happen uh, what happens to us because events are really really fast and important in Mexico and every day people wake up and there's a huge event that makes you forget uh, what happened yesterday. And uh, so in that sense, documentary cinema for me is uh, very important and covers this quite basic uh, um, phase um, of, uh, of just being uh, at the témoignage um, of, of, um, of, of history. Uh, we are in that in that um, in that phase in that state in Mexico on what goes to to, to documentary cinema. Uh, we are uh, many of us are doing th uh, things that go around the the violence that has uh, completely drowned us, and um, so in that sense, uh, I believe it was very important uh, to to have this film not to forget, so that we won't. Uh, uh, repeat in the future the same story. There is also a very um, uh, a tragic fact that uh, from the beginning of this year, four journalists in Mexico um, were killed. Um, do you think that um, um, working on, on this kind of movies and um, maybe um, um, making movies about um, courageous work of journalists could improve the situation and the uh, treatment of the journalists in Mexico? Um, I hope so. Um, I have, I, I have the, the very deep uh, feeling that it's society that has to protect journalists, journalists uh, in sense of um, really understanding their, their importance uh, to, to, the, to democracy and to the the functionment of, uh, of society. And I believe that for some people discovering this uh, story about someone as well known as Carmen, but from the inside maybe of, uh, of the story can help uh, uh, valuing her, the job. So in, in that sense, I believe we can make an impact. However, it's very, it is very sad that I, I, I mean, I'm, I'm realistic. Films won't change uh, the assassinations because it do, doesn't depend. I mean, the, the people that are, that are sending people to kill journalists don't watch our films, I believe, and, and uh, they have another agenda. And, um, and not only films, but the, the, the president. I mean, if we changed governments since 2018 and we had this big uh, hope that things could change, and unfortunately, as you said, uh, when you see the numbers, uh, journalists are still being killed. So the importance uh, is, uh, I believe, to, uh, I mean, the problem is that uh, cartels and uh, government are now so linked, you don't really know who is who, that it's very complicated uh, that the, the own, the, the, the governments protect uh, the journalists because they are the same. So they, they don't want journalists to reveal all this, um, these links. So uh, the things that we have to make one step before in order to clean our country, and that's a very complicated thing to do. Uh, however, there are some ideas like legalization. I believe legalization would be a, uh, really a good way to try to uh to 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 have solutions and this would impact in the lives of journalists for sure it is a, a huge chain so what films do is that the open um, discussion this sort of panels uh open dialogues and this is what we have to i believe to fight for uh, at least in a country like Mexico. We have to, to fight for legalization uh, and, and indirectly we will make an impact in the, in the work of journalists. Okay, thank you very much. Again, uh, congratulations on this um, amazing movie. 
um, I should probably call um, everyone who have a chance to uh, watch it. Now it's uh, touring uh, film festivals. Um, do you think it will be maybe uh, available for uh, general public? Um, what's your plan with the, with the movie in that sense? Um, well, as a regular film in regular conditions, normally we do a circuit of uh, one of two years in festivals, depending on how it goes. However, with, um, with the pandemic and the COVID situation, we and our theaters uh, were closed or are still closed in Mexico. We have to wait until they open so that um, we can have a regular theater screenings in, in Switzerland, in Mexico, in uh, Germany, in some countries that have uh, this possibility. And further on, uh, the, the movie will go uh, to television. So, um, so we'll just have to wait, I believe, until uh, one more year to, uh, yeah, the middle of uh, 2021 to have more online, online screenings and, and festivals and then the theaters and then have it just on a VOD and, and television.